Hi, Chris from Mixdown Online. I'm with Jonathan from Rupert Neve Design. Hi, Jonathan. How you doing? Here we are at the Summer NAMM 2017. We're on the uh, floor of the show here in Nashville, and we're going to show you the Rupert Neve Design's Shelfer Channel. It's a great piece. We're going to give you a quick walkthrough on what it does. Okay, here we have a direct box, and it's a real direct box. So a real direct box also has a ground lift on it, because who would ever need that? And it's got a through, which means that you can actually pass it through to your, your uh, amplifier. You don't have to stick a Y cord in that. Then we have Rupert's first transformer gain mic preamp in over 40 years. So what does transformer gain mean? It means the first 15 dB of the, of the gain of the mic pre comes from the transformer, which means it's very vibey and it has a really vintage but intense sound. Um, we did a custom transformer specifically for this um, channel. I, it's not in any of our other products. Um, and the whole design philosophy for this was to kind of go hark back to some of the best things that Rupert's done in the past, but with some modern updates in terms of not only tone, but just really more quieter, more flexibility. You had a mic pre, it's Rupert Neve, so it's high voltage, um, it's class A, um, 72 dB of gain, it runs on 48 volts, not 48 volts of phantom for the microphone, but 48 volt rails. So it's got tons of headroom. Most, you know, if you think about an API rack running on 16 volts, that's quite a bit of difference in voltage available. Um, then we have a high pass filter right here, variable from uh, 20 hertz all the way up to 250 hertz. And you can do a cool thing with it, which is send it to the side chain of the compressor. Why is that important to some of your uh, clients? Because that's one of the ways you can keep a compressor from pumping. If you take the low frequency out of the side chain, the side chain is what triggers the compressor, it means it won't pump in time with the music. Now, that's a cool effect, but you don't want it all the time. Right after that, we have a three band inductor EQ. Why are inductors interesting? Inductors are half a transformer. It's basically a uh, coil wrapped around uh, a core. So what does that mean? Transformer-based electronics used like this, or inductors, allow interaction back and forth between the different, the, what the circuitry before and circuitry after it. So you get a very vibey sound, you get a very full, intense sound with a lot of nice harmonics. Um, yeah. Most of the time, and I think this is true for your users, when you go out of the box, you're going out because you want some tone, you want some exactly. attitude, you want some character. Yeah. You're not going out to get the most clean thing possible. You mm -hmm. can do that in the box very well. So inductor EQs are particularly prized, and of course are things like Poltex, APIs, a lot of the classic EQs of the past, um, they're prized for their tone. And here, um, this is loosely based on the tone of the uh, uh, Neve 1064, which is revered for its girth and low frequency sound. The mid-band is based on a 1073, with that mid-range forwardness and drive that everyone associates with the Neve product. And the high band is more really of a um, modern hybrid, a little bit more open sound on it. Next up, we have Rupert's first diode bridge compressor since the famed 2254E and 33609. And this was a complete re-examination of diode bridge compressors for Rupert. Um, he was able to get it to be 20 dB quieter he went for a full four, uh, four diode bridge instead of the classic two diode bridge. So you have four diodes at work on this, which allows it to also be much faster. So one of the criticisms, if you had a criticism of a diode bridge compressor, is that attack times generally are only around 50 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds. Yeah. This will go well under one millisecond Seriously. of attack time. So it'll go all the normal speeds, but also very fast if you wanted to grab something and hold level and behave a little bit more like a limiter. Um, it has complex, uh, you know, obviously, of course, it's got ratio. It has complex uh, time constants. So in the mid-range one, you actually have slower attack, faster release. Um, and then there's a multiplier here to go fast to double all the time constants. So you have a lot of flexibility in terms of your attack and release times. You, of course, have parallel compression because we all need that these days, particularly if you're using a, a dial bridge compressor, which has a lot of attitude you might want to dial a little bit of the regular signal back in there and allow yourself a little balance between the heavily compressed sound and less compressed sound. Okay. Um, last up, uh, we have silk. We have silk red and silk blue. You see both of these here? What is silk? We get asked this a lot. Okay, on a classic Neve module, the way people set them up, you'd set them up for the right amount of gain, then you go two clicks past that and start banging the transformer harder, mm -hmm. you'll get that classic Neve sound. 
Okay, that's really hard in the digital era because if you go two clicks past normal level, you're just killing your A to D converter exactly, and it's peaking yeah. out. So it's a very difficult thing to deal with. The other thing that happens with that is if you're working on a dynamic track, when it's soft, it doesn't have much saturation. When it's something, someone's banging hard, like this guy trying to play piano <laughs> over here, uh, when they're banging really hard, it's going to actually have too much potential distortion for it. So silk is a way to saturate the output transformer irrespective of level. You control the amount of silk by dialing it in from about maybe, let's say, under 0.2% under distortion all the way up to 5% okay. distortion. And there's two harmonic profiles for it. Silk blue is weighted towards low frequency harmonics. Silk red is weighted towards mid frequency harmonics. So you have two different uh, profiles for the kind of drive and overload you get with it. And we did one actually other really cool thing around the backside of this unit, which Chris is going to pan around and show you. We have two outputs here. We have a regular output, which gives, of course, plus 26 dBm output. But again, that's too much for a lot of interfaces. So we have a negative 6 output, which is 6 dB lower, that outputs at plus 20 dBm. So if you're using, say, an Apollo, an Antelope, um, or some of the interfaces that are designed to peak at plus 21.5 or plus 22 dB, you can saturate the output really easily um, and match up really well to that. So that's an overview of the Rupert Need Designs Shelford channel here on the floor of the 2017 NAMM show for Rupert Need Designs. Excellent, Jonathan. So what else do we have? Well, we'd also like to show you we have a console here today. Here we are with the Rupert Need Designs 5088 8-channel version. This is a smaller form of our console um, that we originally developed for trade shows, but it became so popular with people coming up and seeing, going, hey, this is exactly what I need in my rig, that we ended up building a bunch of these. Um, one of the hallmarks of a 5088 is really wide bandwidth, really high voltage supplies. So the internal operating level on this is plus 45 dBm. It actually is the only console on the planet with a step down transformer on every output to bring it down to plus 24 dBm. It runs on 90 volt rails. A very cool thing about the console is that there's no secondary paths. So every output, every bus, every send is class A, has a transformer, has the same tone as the stereo main outputs. Um, that's very unusual on a console. A lot of times the secondary outputs are compromised in some way, shape, or form. So that means you have a ton of signal routing flexibility, because any output you drive, you can use that as if you were driving the stereo bus itself. Um, all of the 5088s are built custom to order. So what we like to do is sit down with, with someone interested in a console and say, what, how do you work? What's your workflow? How can we help your workflow? Do you, have, do you have preamps that you like? Maybe you need less preamps. Do you have compressors that you like? Maybe you don't need that. Do you need everything? Do you need a compressor, an EQ, and a, a mic pre on every channel? So we can custom configure them to what people want. They're field expandable. Um, they're very flexible. It's a great sounding console. And you guys have some microphones as well. Let's go over and see some microphones. There you go. I want to talk a little bit about SE Electronics. SE Electronics is a very unusual company because all the mics are handmade. They're handmade the old school way. They're handmade, they're hand tensioned, brass capsules, class A electronics, typically transformer output based. This is the way mics were made years ago. Instead of them being uh, stamped out, not tested, not tuned, every SE mic is tested and tuned to have a consistent sound. And they're also not very forward in the mid range, they're very flat in the mid range. It's become popular over the last five or ten years to really boost 5 or 6K on a microphone. Well, I mix a lot. I'm a producer engineer. I never sit down and mix a record and say, hey, it would be awesome if I just jacked 6K on this record. It's not a frequency I hit a lot. So one of the things I really love about SE mics is they're very neutral in the mid-range. And, and if they have any boost, it'll be way up top, maybe a dB or two at 11 or 12K. So a really nice feature. The fit and finish of the mics is pretty awesome. This is a mic that just came out. It's going to be shipping in August. This is the SE8. It's a new small capsule condenser for us. And like all SE mics, it's a class A microphone. It's got exceptionally low self noise. It's like one of the quietest small capsule condensers on the planet. It's got a self noise of 13 dBA. But it'll take a maximum level of 159 dBA. So really wide dynamic range. You see on the back side, we have a 20 dB and, and a 10 dB pad. And then below that, we have an 80 hertz and 160 hertz high pass filter. So this allows it to tailor the sound for what you're doing. As you guys probably know, small capsules are great for acoustic guitar, piano, 
drum overheads, stereo recording in general. They're a wonderful tool. Um, the the uh, MSRP of this mic is, is uh, 399 stereo pair is 599 and this is, I'm sorry, the MSRP is 299 and 599 and the street price for a pair is going to be under 500 bucks. Um, the fit and fitness we're exceptionally proud of. It's a great sounding mic. This is the SEA. We've got another very unusual looking microphone. This is the VR1 ribbon. What I love about this mic is it's almost ruler flat from 20 hertz to almost 18K, which is very unusual for a ribbon. It doesn't roll off on the high end. They do this between, with a combination of these ports on the front and the side ports, uh, allowing to balance the frequency with time arrival, so it's not EQ, it's not peaking the resonance of the capsule to cheat your way to flat frequency response. It's natural ribbon sound that's very wide bandwidth. It'll also take 135 dB SPL, so it won't fold up. You can stick this in front of a kick drum even, and it won't give up. And that's very unusual for ribbon. Small size, makes it very easy to place, and it's $399 street price. The big brother of this, the VR2, which is the active version, is only $499 street price. So you have an active ribbon mic. The differences between an active and a passive ribbon is 20 dB more of gain in the active one, and it's load independent. So it'll work with any kind of preamp. Um, with a passive ribbon, this is true of any passive rhythm, if you only have 50 dB of mic pre of gain available, it might be difficult for some vocals, acoustic guitar. With an active rhythm, if it's condenser-like levels, it'll work with anything. This is Jonathan Pines, Bessie Electronics, from the floor of the 2017 NAMM show, saying a big shout out. Thank you a lot, Jonathan. Our pleasure.